Today on Dry Crow Studios, we take a look at the Ibanez TS9 Overdrive pedal. Yes, at the end, don't worry, we are gonna go over boosting. So here we have a very common, if not the most common, overdrive pedal. A lot of people tend to confuse this with uh, being a distortion pedal. It's not necessarily a distortion pedal. When you're bringing things into higher gain, this is not a high gain pedal. However, you can use it as a boost to boost your guitar signal going into the amp, uh, thus getting a little more saturation and pushing it through uh, another tone control here, which can sometimes tame some low end if it's out of control. But again, this is not a high gain distortion type pedal on its own. Let's take a listen to what it actually does. So here's my clean signal. Here's the Ibanez TS9 engaged. And here's my driven signal. And here is the TS9 engaged once again, but not in a boost setting. So now that you've heard the basics of what this pedal can do, uh, one of the greatest effects to this pedal is actually what guitar you're running. So let's, we'll use the neck position here, but we'll run through a different, uh, bunch of different guitars with different pickup types. And you can kind of hear how it affects the TS9. We'll actually also take the drive back to about nine o'clock. So as you can hear, each guitar will make this pedal sound different because those guitars have different pickups and they sound different. Um, so that is one thing that you would want to take into consideration. So if you wanna try and use this as a, a, a distortion type pedal, more than likely you're taking that, uh, that gain uh, into the, basically to the max uh, on stun. Uh, but you would really want to get uh, a humbucker based guitar or humbucker equipped guitar that's just going to uh, get a little more uh, push because it has a little more um, oomph to it and it'll get it into distortion type territory. But enough talking. Before we get into how to use this as a boost, uh, let's take a listen to three overdriven sound samples.
now that we've heard what this sounds like as an overdrive pedal uh, on a clean channel, and then for the leads, I, I did use the drive channel on the um, Supersonic 22. Let's take a look at one of the most common uses for the Ibanez TS9, and that is boosting a high gain amplifier. Doesn't have to be high gain. Uh, I don't consider the JCM 800 high gain. You have to use a boost, whether it's this or something else, uh, to really get it into that territory. And of course, you have to open the amp up by raising the volume. So, um, one of the most common amps that you would boost, and I'm not saying you have to boost this type of an amp or this particular amp. Uh, I don't always, it's kind of an energy thing for me. I always AB with and without. Uh, so one of the most common amps to boost is a Mesa Boogie dual rectifier. One of the reasons for that is uh, the bass control on it. Uh, so it can come across as a very flubby amp. One of the reasons behind that is the EQ, each EQ affects the next EQ. So your low end control directly affects your mid and your treble. So one of the mistakes that usually happens with uh, a dual rectifier is bringing that bass control past like nine o'clock. I usually have it set to about eight o'clock um, and it'll, it'll start to sound a lot more and more flubby. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a, a give and take with a dual rectifier, it takes a little bit of time. But a lot of people do use a TS9 in a boost setting. So what a boost setting is, you take your drive, all the way off, or sometimes it really depends, you can add a little bit of drive into it. You take your level all the way up, and your tone here, you can set that to whatever you like, EQ to taste. What that'll do is that will actually uh, boost the guitar signal coming into the amp and add a little bit of extra EQ to it. So what it can do, uh, because it's going through uh, another t set of EQ here with the tone knob, it can tame your low end on your amp. And because you're boosting the signal going into the amp, it can allow you to get a little more earlier saturation, which means you don't have to have your gain control all the way up. So let's take a listen to this off on a dual rectifier, this on and then off and then on again on a dual rectifier. So when we're talking about boosting, you don't generally have to do that to every amp or even any amp. However, uh, I find personally, I what I do when I record, I AB, I do without and then with, and I choose what uh, sounds best. And a lot of the time it actually comes down to energy. Uh, and usually uh, having a little bit more earlier saturation really helps things. Um, so some amps like a 6505 plus, which is what we'll use here, or like an angle, angle fireball, um, uh, angle invader, different amps like that, which are quite high gain on their own. Um, I used to always think you never ever want to use a boost on because there's no reason to do it. However, uh, what I've been finding lately is, um, because of that earlier saturation and the fact that you're hitting it through another EQ going into the amp, um, you can start to actually raise your low end control with this uh, tone control here, or because of the tone control, and you're able to turn down your gain 
a little more than you normally would. So I'm not one person who uh, uses a lot of gain. Um, I don't like bringing the gain control past like 1 or 130 a lot of the time. Um, you just lose a lot of the clarity uh, and definition in the sound. So getting a little more earlier saturation with a boost pedal has its benefits. It's not always noticeable um, to like the listener or whatever, but I find that when I'm playing, I get a little more energy sometimes when you have this engaged. So let's take a listen to a 6505 plus with this off and then on and then off and then on. <laughs> So you may or may not have heard any differences there. Um, I definitely felt it when I was recording and when I was playing. Um, another thing to note here, this doesn't fix everything. Uh, and you can get similar tones to this in a boost just by changing the EQ controls. However, this can give you a lot more control. Um, so yeah, you can get it to sound different. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't work for you, but um, you can add in a lot more EQ when using this as a boost. So now that I've made this video way longer than it needed to be and way longer than I wanted it to be, um, I'm just gonna say good day. And yeah, I don't know, I'll, I'll probably do like a boosting video on this as well. Uh, and I'll probably do like the TS-808 and the TS-Mini and stuff like that, whatever I, have before I send a lot of them to Kevin on this channel. Thanks for watching.